Hello there. The Wire continues to get better and better each episode. We're only three episodes deep and we're about to get into the fourth episode. What's going on guys? My name is Ellie Moses, a 24 year old law and film student here from Sydney, Australia, absolutely shooting his shot. And today we're going to be watching episode four of The Wire season one titled Old Cases. I have been watching this series for the first time. It has been absolutely fantastic thus far. And it's only going to get better and better in my opinion from how much you guys are hyping this up. But yeah, we're going to waste no more time. We're going to get into the reaction. We're going to absolutely have some fun with this thing. Let's absolutely smash it. Let's roll. Let's go. Alright, all three motherfuckers. One, two, three. Oh. They're all three, there's I'm four of them now. <laughs> you heard? I catch my breath, I'm gonna shoot the drawers off this bitch. It's caught on something, Lieutenant. Get over there with Carl. <laughs> he come the old head. He oh no, I thought he was going. <laughs> My ass is kicked. They can move it a bit when I was alone. It must have got wedged in the door somehow. Desk is empty, right? Yeah. You checked it. Well, at this rate, we're never gonna get it in. What? In. Unbelievable. unbe fucking -leavable. Christ. <laughs> yeah, dope. Line between heaven and here. Bubbles! <laughs> this case is a bit humble for you. I know it doesn't look like much on paper, but... I'm guessing the projects is hell. State requests defendant be held as he is part of a continuing investigation and further is subject to a mandatory five years without parole because of prior convictions. Will your office be seeking the mandatory five in this case? Absolutely, Your Honor. Wait, wait. Well, I'll take that into consideration. Five years for a joke? I know illegal substances, but like, I know he's got a priors, but like, is that, is that excessive or am I like, am I being too generous here? I don't know. I feel like I feel like the prosecutor went ham there, man. Like, got his attention at least. Oh, they're gonna try and flip him. Maybe they're gonna try and get to him and say, "Listen, we won't give you the five hey, years, but if you come help us, <laughs> ah, come on, we're celebrating." <clears throat> Patrick's going out of medical. Sweet, sweet, cervical six. My shoulder's numb, my arm's numb. My fingers feel like they belong some son of a bitch in the next county. This is my ticket out of this ratchet department. 66 and two-thirds pension, and I don't have to wait for my 30. I'm gone. Fucking yo, did you a favor? Kid hit like a mule, I gotta say. <laughs> you should take a couple of days. Think it over before you put in papers. My brother-in-law's got a video store out of Moravia. The 6,000 a week straight rentals, another 8,000 in porn. He needs a partner. Hey, Patty, they take that off the top of a medical pension. If you report on his income, they do. Do I look that fucking stupid? Have a nice life, Lieutenant. Hey, maybe getting knocked out was a blessing for him. You go up eight or nine steps, let go of the rail, take a little jump. I break my fucking neck like that. <laughs> you don't break nothing. You do a little dance on those steps. You're up to two thirds with me. And maybe you sue the city, get a little more. Looking at your sheet here, and. Well, for one thing, it's a little wrong to be calling it a sheet. More like a book. Point is, we got the room to get a little crazy on you. Like she said, it's your turn. Tell us some stories. Might could be somebody else's turn. Stories. Avon Barksdale. <laughs> <laughs> know the name? Every motherfucker up in them towers know the name. Myself, I ain't never really had a word with the man. String a bell, then. Weebay, Savino, Stinkum, CCO, Rock Rock. Well, who are you gonna give us, Marvin? You don't say a name soon. You're gonna be courtside. I. I. I what? <laughs> All right, I take the years. Damn. 
They intrude to the code. <laughs> Gotta protect the streets. <laughs> he ain't a snitch. He ain't a rat. <laughs> he ain't no 6 9 Damn, boy. You should see the cop. When you're ready to get up, put that on. Report to bunk A7. A7. Don't be later than breakfast. Hey. Uh, who else is up in here? Anybody from Westside? DC boys, mostly. Is he just gonna try and walk out of there? Did he just get out of juvenile detention just like that? <laughs> On fucking drive. Me and you drawing another shit detail. This ain't a shit detail. No. I'm in upper fucking Marlboro, Maryland, and still going south. And he starts crying like a little bitch. Because he knows that we drove all the way down to Prince George's for more of his ass, right? Uh, imagine we jack him up toss him into a small room and tell him that Detective Mahone is near dead from the sucker punch. It's like, no shit. Oh, they're going to try and flip someone else. Into a coma. And now the commissioner and Mrs. Mahone are at his bedside in the ICU. And we've been ordered to come down here, rip off his scrotum, put it in a jar, and drive it back to Baltimore so it can sit with the fucking bowling trophies behind the bar at the FOP Lodge. <laughs> All right? After which, fuck nuts... Stops whimpering long enough to just start giving people up. Whoever. Stringer Bell, Avon Barksdale. Yeah? Yeah. Little prick turns on everybody. And we break the case wide open. Cool. Right? <laughs> it ain't gonna be that easy, fam. <laughs> Because <laughs> he ain't even going to be there. Witnesses lying, witnesses paid off, witnesses backing up on their story. Can you blame them? Not really. Every now and then we visit the projects. They live there. Mm -hmm. I D, love right? city life. <laughs> D'Angelo, yeah. This one's got a D as a possible shooter. This one connects. No way. Yeah, I'm seeing it. Your squad's down a man for weeks, Jimmy. We're gonna be humping your calls, catching your cases, you know, hopping around like a one-legged pig town whore on check day, and for what? So that you can have your big adventure and solve everybody else's cases? Is this what I'm hearing? He's got you, Jimmy. Where's the love, McNulty? Show me some fucking love. All right. <laughs> right a boy. He's my son. Gotcha, Jimmy. <laughs> All right, motherfucker. You got me too. So I'm gonna call Verizon. See if they got a fresh listing. You happy now, bitch? You sure about that tag, boss? I seen the van. They cleared the court, mold up Amity, toward Lexington. Place where a reporter stole off a car parked right here on this block. Oh, so you thinking they from right around here, right? <laughs> Maybe. Well, the tower said it was Omar and his crew. Omar? Who's he? You ain't no Omar? Omar the Terror. Been ripping and bobbing out here for years. <laughs> he fierce? That nigga don't play. Got a last name? Just Omar. You don't need no last name. Who's his family? You know I love the way Anthony? I love the way Bubbles is sitting. <laughs> no hot Anthony. Just sort of above his nose, peeking Just out the window. <laughs> Do not tell me you don't remember no hot Anthony. Damn, girl, what time you been policing that all these years? <laughs> right now, I am personally ashamed to be your snitch. <laughs> oh, shit. What? I'm late for my class. <laughs> Package be moving. Avon stuff always be good. Yeah, that's a sweet score. It's all right. That play was a little bit raggedy in there, though. I fucked up. I know. Let go your name. Saying I really can't you shouted me out. 
Everybody in these projects been knowing Omar, you heard? <laughs> I just thought them coming down on y'all, baby boy. Shirley coming with her game. I ain't fucking day with that shit. And Mr. Omar. And I check late. Hey, yo, Mike. Hook a sister up, y'all. So what next, yo? Got some irons. Think about working the flush and run over the east side. So things cooler, Mike. Yeah, I'll work. <laughs> so what up, man? You don't want to lay over here tonight? Nah. Sure. Nah. I'm gonna go see my mom. Keep it close. Hear yeah, that? <laughs> 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 he didn't like the way Omar was touching his shoulder. Who the man, huh? Sucks seeing the living conditions, man. And the, the, the thing is, the show only deals with Baltimore. It's all over the place like that. Like a lot of areas have that issue. Hey, Bob's. Hey, McNutty. <laughs> that like he said McNutty. <laughs> What's up? You ever heard of No Hard Anthony? Who a Anthony Little? Ten fifty eight Argyle Apartment sixteen J. <laughs> in Hagerstown on a robbery bit. What about him? I love how Bubbles is laughing in the background. You can see him smirking and stuff like that. Like he's done his shit. He knows his research. Like he knows he knows his shit. He's done his research. Sorry, and yeah, he's up to speed on things. Come on, Kim, you're slacking off. My man. <laughs> My man. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck y'all. Hey, hey, you don't do your homework, Greg. <laughs> you know the crack a motherfuckers do when they kill a deer, or like when they go out killing animals, whatnot. Got him on the front of the truck, tied up, stretched out, so everybody could see it. You feel me? I'm serious, that's what I want. I want that motherfucker on display. We send a message to the courtyard about this motherfucker, so people know we ain't playing. Yeah, we got people's on it. Damn, he wants to. a thousand on the bucks, and it's a deuce on Omar. Yeah, Damn, birds he... on it. He wants to so medieval no Omar. <laughs> You know, Bird jailed with Omar down the cut, right? He said he all faggot. A faggot? Mm-hmm. Fuck out of here. Said he had a whole stable of boys down in Jessup. This punk motherfucker got even less use for pussy now that he home. So he got a lot of heart for a cocksucker, huh? Yo, 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 yo. We doubling down on Sweet Lips, all right? We make it four motherfucking thousand dollars on him. Six if I get the chance to holler at him before he get got. <laughs> Say no more. Take care of all that. 6k bounty on a mark. Come up dead on a stash one night. GTA style. He's jumping out the next. Something up at the pit? Maybe. Yeah. What's up with my nephew? I don't know. I mean, he's doing good. He's making that money out the hole, but he might have a problem he don't know about. I'm on it. Uh, uh, okay, <laughs> am I reading too much into it right there that, you know, Stringer is the one that did the layup for Avon right there? He said, I'm on it, and he's like, I'll lay you up. Like, I'll sort things out. Like, I'm the assister. I'm, I'm the general doing the dirty work, yeah? And I'm the one, you know, who uh, gets things done right here. You know, you, you, I'm the one, like, I don't know. I don't know, I just feel like, yeah, I, I don't know if that's meant to say a lot about the relationship right there and how Avon is like the commander, you know, he's the one that dictates, um, he's the one that tells everyone what to do, he's the capitan, and then obviously, um, you know, Stringer's the one, he's like one of the, not the pawns per se, I guess, he's he's more than a pawn because he's a bit higher up than everyone else, but Stringer, yeah, you know, he's the one that gets shit done, he's the make sure that, he's the one that makes sure um, shit gets done, and yeah, he reports to Avon, and he's the one, you know, I assist you, man, <laughs> I lay you up, and, and you finish bang I'm late for something I'll drop you after on the way back downtown what's it late for soccer suck what <laughs> suck what <laughs> oh, I was talking about the kids man
He is sucking dead. <laughs> yeah, I think Bubbles my favorite show, uh, my favorite character so far, man. He's hilarious. I feel bad for him. Like I want him to be better in life. Like go down the right path. But he's a hella funny informant, man. Oh, that's the wife. -y. That's the ex-wife. <laughs> hey, Mikey. How are ya? Hmm? Who's winning? They are four one. Four one? Oh, Who's come on. For you guys? Ricardo, my assist. Assist? That's good. Hey, they still down four one. Get a drink on the brakes, okay? I don't want you to get dehydrated. Hey. hey. It's just bubbles. Hi. <clears throat> okay. Go on, Bye, Mikey. Bye. Go get him. You're late. He thought you weren't going to come this time either. Hey, at least he, he showed up. Job. He showed up. get out here when he gets off the bus at four. You see him every day, he gets Don't up. Don't curse at me. My lawyer says Fuck it's... Fuck your good. lawyer. Fuck you. Fuck you. Did you see? Did you see? Yeah, I saw. I saw. Come on, get out. Hey, he just wants to see the kids more, man. Like, come on, wifey. Yo, are they playing in long pants? Did I just realize? <laughs> it's good for you. Mhm. Mm yeah, that's the thing. It's a thin line between heaven and here. That's the thing with Bubbles, man. If he gets caught lacking once, one individual spots him, he's done for. Like, one mistake. No matter where you think you're dropping him off, no matter how safe you think he is, if he gets seen rolling around with the cops, it's night-night. How he know where this stash at? Hey, they got the milk crate rim. Because <laughs> some niggas snitching. Man, ain't nobody got to be snitching for Omar one of his boys to creep by and see where the stash Man, Boys Village ain't shit. I'm just too bad for that off-brand little boy bullshit, man. They can't hold me. <laughs> what you laughing at? What's so funny? <laughs> you was me, your ass still be down there. You ever seen a city jail, nigga? You ever caught a body? I'm the one who just got home, remember? Eight months over on Eager Street with a body on me, nigga. Yeah, you got the one. Yeah, the one you know about. Man, y'all little motherfuckers need to ask around. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> out near the county, right? On the high end of the east side? They got these apartments out there, right? So there was this little shorty who used to stay out there. She was like... Whew. I mean... I ain't seen a female that fine since. I gotta say, Shorty was right. You fucked him? Nah, man, it wasn't like that. This was a Shorty my uncle was messing with. So, you know, they was going on at it for a little while. Till she found out that my uncle got another little Shorty ran away. <laughs> More right to say he got a few of them around the way, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so she goes off the hook and shit, talking about she gonna call the police, start talking about shit she ain't supposed to know about. Oh, shit. Yeah, you know it. But see, I got some creep to me. My uncle, he know that shit. So they rolled me out past her crib. Is that the case file, the girl? They showed me how she lives right on the ground floor, right? The first level. So, you know, I go creeping around the back to the back window. I got the four or five on me, the big gun. And I walk up to the window and I look in and it's dark as shit because it's like three o'clock in the damn morning and shit. You know, you can't see shit. What you do? So I pulled out the piece. I start tapping with the back of it on the window. It was quiet, you know, but it was loud enough so she could hear that shit. Tap, tap, tap. That's what she heard, yo. Sure enough, she comes out. She's naked and shit. I don't know why the fuck, but she has a robe, and as she's slipping on a robe, she turns on the light. And you know, when she does that, and it's light on the inside, she can't see shit on the outside. Dang. Game over. She naked. Tap, tap, tap. So 
she hears that shit on the window, and she ain't got no choice but to walk over there and see what it is. She steps up, looks out, see where it's coming from. What happened? He shot him. Yo, D, if she was all that, why didn't you fuck her first? Nigga, you sick. Just shut up. What? No, I'm, I'm just saying. I like how he, like that's two episodes in a in a row we've had great conversations um in 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 the courtyard right there in the in the low rises that's that in the in the project with with um with D'Angelo and um Wallace and I forgot the other guy's name and the other guy's name um and I loved how one of the individuals there called him D because that's what the case is all about it's the individual named D that apparently went up and shot this girl um and I like how he left it ambiguous to the boys whether he shot her or not but obviously I think he's implying that he shot her he, need, he didn't need to say he shot her he told the whole story enough um he made it look like he was the devil in the dark man just approaching her and then you know that, that was some cynical shit the way he um told that story and yeah knowing um knowing d um in terms of like how he's already caught a body i wouldn't be surprised if that was his first one or like one of the other ones he's done um because it's clearly proven that he's already done one um but that one he's probably been off the hook and then the, with no witnesses whereas the one we saw at the beginning of the show was the one with witnesses and that's where sort of avon and stringer and the boys had to get down and dirty and use their intimidation game um you know it's all a game so yeah they use the intimidation game on the witnesses and then yeah we know what happened after that I love how she continues doing um, the washing as if this is like natural. It's happened before. It's happened many times before. Tell Bodie we're on his ass. I'm sorry for cursing me at the door. I mean, um, I couldn't see that it was only you. Is it the drugs again? Would you like to sit down? Preston came to me when my daughter died. He was four years old. But even then, I knew he was angry. His mother lived out there, caught up in it. After a while, you couldn't make us see nothing else. Nah, man. Nah, that wasn't us. 2.30 in the town is Watch your eyes are crazy, man. I don't know what you're talking about, man. <laughs> so how you think you're gonna carry it? No, I'm sorry, man. And I'm sorry for the way we came through here. If Preston comes past, give him this and uh, tell him we need to talk, okay? I'm sorry. Damn, I feel like he genuinely is sorry right there. Like that he disturbed the peace, like... And the, the woman's been through so much. I'm talking. I'm talking. Yeah. See, sometimes you don't need violence in the game. You don't need to use violence. And I like how we little get a little bit of insight um, into what the living conditions are like. We already have... Um, but like we get to go into one of the apartments now and just, you know, see what the people have been through. I like how we keep getting that each episode. I, I got this saucy wench in my gun sights, so to speak. And uh, I am dangerously close to engorged <laughs> when all of a fucking sudden, out of fucking nowhere, fucking detective fucking Jimmy McNulty pops into my head. <laughs> Honestly, I gotta open my eyes and admit to myself that my whole night is ruined. At which point, I got nothing to do but think about the problems of Jimmy McNulty. Because clearly, this guy and his fucking problems are standing between me and all worldly pleasure. Clearly. First of all, it's not Jimmy's fault. No? No. Jimmy is an addict, sir. What's he addicted to? Himself. <laughs> Wait, you telling me you a married man and you're sitting up at night with a cold bee 
wanking? Really? I see the wedding ring finger unless you got problems going on, but come on, man. What? That's sad. It's not funny, sir. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it's a fucking tragedy is what it is. The guy, he has come to believe that he is always the smartest fuck in the room. And you know what? It's not his fault. Because uh, let's face it, he's not going to Johns Hopkins or joining Mensa. He's taking a fucking job with the Balmer Police Department. His first two years in homicide, he's in Umansky squad, partnered with Tony Lamartino. It must have been months even, he was the smartest fuck in the fucking room. What's your point, Jay? My point is, he can't help it. It makes him an asshole. I know, but it's also what makes him good police. Last year, he gives me eight clearances. One of them was a decomp floater who was John Doe for three weeks. Hey, I'm standing up for McNulty. Pick up Jay. Tell your boy to wrap up that bullshit detail in two weeks. He does that, he comes home. Clean slate. That's Jimmy McNulty, man. We all know. <laughs> in two weeks, shit's gonna hit the fan. So what did you tell him? Never shit a shitter, deputy. That's what I fucking told him. I did good, right, Jimmy? Look, I gotta go. I like how he calls from a payphone as well, you know? Any phone call could be traced. Or like, not traced, but like, any phone call could be listened to in the department. Discuss the Hicks ruling as a manifestation of the judiciary's attempt to maintain a speedy disposition of criminal cases within a modern court system. <laughs> what? What? That's what I said. Yeah, that's the type of questions they ask in an exam. And you're like, huh? Did you highlight my sofa? <laughs> you want my marker? I need to see a warrant. <laughs> I'm serious. I need to see some probable cause. <laughs> I'm going to beat your ass. How about that for probable cause? Give me, give me, give me the fucker. I'm getting all violent and shit. You know you just violated my civil rights, huh? That's it. New rule. No marker on the cap. You get over that table over there and do your homework. Go. Take it and go. Thank you. <laughs> uh -huh. Come and eat some club soda. Damn, girl. This cell phone bill must eat up the paycheck. Nah, most of that's work. It's on the company. Oh, she cheating. <laughs> she calling someone else. I don't know. <laughs> You might trace I'll down them cell phone calls. Bomb! <laughs> I was gonna think he just dumb. Is that? That's your page, Emma. Should be. That's me. That's me. Hey, Jack. Yo, watch that shit on my head. Hey, man, it ricocheted off the fucking camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need some aim. Oh, they cloned the pager? Oh no, 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 not yet, not yet. My bad, my bad. Oh, they did clone it. They did clone it. I think it worked. Yeah, yeah. So what do you think? What, title three? Right, but it's not for a wiretap. It's to clone a pager. I got it from promo. <laughs> Pages, huh? Is this the guy that's gonna do the insurance job on the stairs? Yeah, it is. It's the white guy. He won out the force. The thing is, we're gonna have to sell this. <laughs> you wanna raise it with Daniels? <laughs> He'll listen to you more than me. <laughs> What would it take to do the pages? Wiretap affidavit. I think we got enough PC from the hand to hands and surveillance. We got most of the exhaustion. I'm exhausted. Just listen to this shit. Good. Exhaustion is a legal requirement <laughs> for using electronic intercepts. <laughs> we got to prove nothing else works. See, we did the raids. 
We made the arrest, but nobody flipped. We don't have an informant who takes us anywhere above the street. That's pretty much exhaustion. All we got left to do now is to follow one of these mopes and to prove to ourselves that we can't do it. See, we try to show a judge we can't make the case by following these guys, and we can't. How can we keep on any of them when they go up in those towers? But you gotta show you try. See, I, I like, I, I talked about a couple episodes ago. Obviously, these guys, they're doing the right thing, and I feel like this show will portray like the dirty side of the police force and also the right side of the police force. And they seem to not be cutting any corners. They're doing um, the right thing. Um, they're not, you know, bypassing the legal requirements. They seem to be achieving this the right way. Obviously, um, violence is part of the game, but this is the sort of cause of action where it's like, we don't need to have violence. We can go about it a different way and possibly, you know, reach beyond the surface level, which we are now, because th at the moment, they haven't got anything beyond the courtyard. They haven't got anything, um, you know, um, beyond just the projects the surface so they haven't even gone into the apartments they haven't even gone into conversations with other people it's just those boys in the orange sofa that orange sofa is you know they're, they're plagued by it they haven't gone past that obviously a couple photos here and there but they can't go beyond the surface level thus far and obviously it seems like they're going about it the right way um and yeah that's part of the slow methodical process for the police force and i like that this show is depicting that it's not cutting any corners um and things like that and it's going to be that slow methodical build up eventually to a nuclear weapon that's going to go off with this show um so yeah and then again i have sympathy for the individuals in the projects because you know those people are sort of like born into those lifestyle and they have nothing else to like th there's, there's no other option in life there's no parental figure to guide them on another path um and the only thing they know is crime and doing this and um like living um or like earning a living of you know ruining others lives with the drugs and things like that um so i have sympathy for both sides um and like i said i always talk about it, it's a systemic issue because this show um, could have been probably portrayed in any other city. Um, it just so happens to be in Baltimore. I just feel like a lot of other cities have this similar issue. And I always thought, I talked about a couple of reactions ago that, you know, you could cut the head off the snake. You could take out Avon Barksdale um, and Stringer per se. You can take out any others, but there will always be other individuals that will come to take their place and continue to run this scheme. Um, so yeah, it's just, that's why I think it's a systemic issue and they're doing all this effort for, you know, to take out Avon Barksdale, this mystery man who they only got an image of like a boxing from a boxing profile, but I just feel like there'll be another person after Avon Barksdale and it will continue to be along those lines. Do we have a pager number? This is written on the stash house wall with the letter D next to it. Is that D'Angelo? Did you check it? It's him. He doing better work than all y'alls. <laughs> he riding solo like this Jason Derulo and killing it. You put you all on the show right there. I don't know if McNult McNulty's a little bit jealous there. You know how he's kind of talking about it's all about McNulty, it's all about him. Or he's just, he's sus. Um, Will you explain to me again why I'm about to rework a six month old crime scene? Well, look at this narrow ass file. Keeley didn't do shit on this. He did the scene though. What's Keeley we're talking about? Fucking Jay and his leaps of logic. This case is nowhere near anything we're doing. So? Like, Give it, it, it wasn't anyhow, McNulty to do that. Someone else did it, and he kind of. Did you know Lester Freeman? Mm hmm. A little why? He's with us on this Barksdale thing. I thought you said they gave you humps. He looks like a hump. He acts like a hump, sitting there playing with his toy furniture. <laughs> Jimmy, he makes more money off of that shit than you do off of this job. Don't let Lester fool you. He did already. <laughs> the old call, he showed something. Hey, he's natural police. He used to be homicide. Why'd he leave? Ask him. Motherfucker. Guessing that's the window he tapped on in the kitchen.
That's that homicide work. <laughs> Motherfuck means we found something. Fuck means we don't have anything. <laughs> oh fuck. Oh fuck. <laughs> the amount of fuck bombs that have been dropped. <laughs> Like they're speaking in code here with fucks. <laughs> and each fuck means something else because of the tone they're using it in. Motherfucker. <laughs> <Fucking> A. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever investigated this before did a lousy job. Cause these guys in five minutes have unpacked a lot. Fuck. Fuck. Motherfucker. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> Oh man, that was great. That was, I I swear, wait, wait. I I, I want to commentate on that scene right there. Tapping. Fuck. Oh. <laughs> it's that homicide work. Love how the old man is just there, watching greatness <laughs> unfold. Oh, they're looking for the bullet cap. Motherfucker. <laughs> 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 Even he's impressed. Yo, can we appreciate how great that scene was with like 95% of the scene using the word fuck or like, uh, like I feel like the only words that weren't fuck there were pal, fucking A, oh, A, um, and then mother, uh, but that had an interpretation of fuck as well. Um, but like, I just want to say how they used a single word for 95% of the scene right there. And because of the way, it, I guess it, it just goes to show the beauty of the writing of this show um, and the versatility of using just one word and how versatile it can be when delivered in different tones, when delivered with different facial expressions, um, when delivered with different sort of like um, various forms of like body language and things like that. Um, it's with visual storytelling as well, depending on what you're looking at as well, accompanied by the tone of voice with the fuck, whether it's like an old shit fuck or like, fuck, damn, we got something here. Or like, fuck me. Like, you get, like, this is, whoa. <laughs> like, oh, motherfucker, are you serious? Like, you get what I mean? Like, the versatility of the word right there, they're like, okay, let's write a scene where 95% um, of the entire five minutes we just watched is one word or like a variation of that word and the actors will probably nail it um, and it's all on the actors to sort of like deliver it in different ways react to it in different ways depending on what they're uncovering in the scene oh man it was fantastic it was fantastic it, it that was a masterpiece scene of uh, you know understanding what you're writing okay it's all fun like the creators probably saying okay we're gonna write a scene where we use fuck for 95% of the time or nearly 100% of the time okay 
but like what's the objective of that how are we going to utilize that okay we're doing a crime scene right here um and these guys are homicide experts they're going to uncover the scene and they're going to you know go back and look at the faults that were done in sort of like the original uh, from the original detective and you know what they failed to uncover and how lousy the report was and yeah based on the sort of revelations they're going to find the fuck words going to be used as they sort of like investigate the scene and uncover different things accompanied by the visual storytelling of the permanent marker the bullet hole um the, the file the photos in the file and i feel like you know maybe different forms of media would try and replicate that scene uh and say and copy from it and use a different word or like you know try and you know uh pay homage to it or replicate it and try and do it better um and i haven't seen it in media unless i haven't noticed it and because i see it now in the why i'm just like oh maybe i've seen it before but they haven't done it um to a better extent than the wire because the wire did it first and the wire is like probably like the um the wire is the sort of like the benchmark for it. It was Cars such a fantastic scene. Hurt, you need to be on top. You could get lost in the comedy in it, and it is comedic, <laughs> but like there's more to it. The plan is to stay on the Angelo. So you're police after all. You know what you're doing, but you ain't been doing it. <laughs> How long you been in the pawn shop unit? Thirteen years and four months. Thirteen years and four months. I gotta ask you. What exactly does a police officer assigned to the pawn shop unit do? You intake reports from registered pawn shops on all items valued over $50. Then you make an index card for that item. Then you file that index card. If someone wants to find out if something stolen has been pawned, we look to see if we have an index card. If we do, we do. If we don't, we don't. You did that for 13 years? And four months. Why'd you ask out of homicide? And four you months. ask about it. You got the boot? Uh-huh. What'd you do to piss him off? Police work. <laughs> I think I need to buy you a drink. <laughs> McNulty 2.0. <laughs> I, I love it. <laughs> oh, that was... He's so fantastic. Right? Listen, the two breakthroughs they've had in the case have come from him in terms of like the photo of Avon in the boxing gym um, and him doing a little bit of investigation and understanding the area um, and, you know, not needing to resort to violence per se and do the raid. And then again, with the pager, you know, um, composed, meticulous, smart work and nailed it. He's done two great things without having to put himself out there, you know, run the streets like Tupac and like go in there and literally do a raid when you got nothing on him. 87, 80 year old woman, stabbed up, nightgown in bed, forced window, rear entry. Why are you fucking up yourself chasing Avon Barksdale? A week after trial ends, Major comes to me and asks me where I want to go. I tell him, I don't care. I like to be outside, you know. Give me a goddamn foot post. I'll still make my money. You know, send my ass up to Edmondson Avenue. I don't give a shit. You went to a foot post? You no, know, Major come back and ask me where I don't want to go. And he asked him, like, you want to make sure I land okay. So I tell him, I don't want no fucking paper shuffle. No office shit. I send my black ass outside and let me somewhere. Pawn shop unit. No. <laughs> they got me good, huh? <laughs> So why they let you out of the box? Why now? I guess they just forgot about me. When they ask you where you want to go, and they are going to ask you where you want to go, do yourself a favor. Keep your mouth shut. <laughs> hey, take a word from the wires, I man. I got it. I got it. Oh, hello. Um... Is Kima there? And you are? Tell her it's, uh, it's McNulty. Yo, what's with McNulty coming out to people's houses unannounced? Come on, man. You got a bad habit. These guys are watching a movie. Who are you, Kima? A decidedly confused white boy. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. She probably know who it is. <laughs> Without even saying McNulty. How'd I go today? Lost him in the 221. Picked him back up in the low rises and then lost him on Shoulder Street after dark. Nicely done. He Are drunk, you okay man. He yeah. drunk. Yeah, I'm fine. I just wanted to, uh, I just wanted to thank you. For what? For today. You know, with, with Daniels. 
You should be thanking Lester. Oh, I did. I just wanted to thank you, too, Detective Greggs. No problem. Good night. That it is. What of this? <laughs> Not much. Love, Lauren. Worse, lonely. <laughs> you didn't make it into class again today. You said you'd stick with it. I'm trying. Things are hard right now. I'm doing the best I can. Mm. You said yourself you needed to do something else. Something better for us. You promised. Look. <laughs> oh, man. I feel like as smart as McNulty is, and he's probably a great police officer, there's a sadly depressed man underneath there. And it does get revealed when he's drunk, or like that's one of the problems as well. Maybe part of it is the, the divorce as well. <laughs> the stress going on outside of work. It doesn't help. It's almost as if, like, the police force is, is like, his, is his escape from, like, you know, um, the family troubles he's had. Because divorce does tend to affect people in a lot of uh, different ways. And not even spending time with the kids. I feel like this is the worst job to have when you've got a family. It's, like, stressful. You don't get to spend much time with the kids. And that probably causes a lot of drama with the wifey and the wifey, you know ends up happening what's happening at the moment um but he could have deep problems as well himself it could be the drinking as well maybe that's a problem going back before the marriage or like during the marriage and things like that um so yeah i feel like despite his confidence he portrays during the day despite his bravado and like his wits and smarts about him mcnulty i feel like underlying uh, there's an underlying like depressed individual right there um and you kind of feel sorry for him a little bit uh, and you've seen it um a couple times this show with him being drunk you know drinking alone um on the cliffside and then falling down that hill and just laughing to himself um and he tends to do stupid stuff when he's drunk like he's gonna do something stupid like he's just lucky he's been in company or like he's just fallen down that hill um laughed at himself and not got involved with those two robbers on the car and then like ended up at greg's house but he could do something really stupid when he's drunk in the future of this show but yeah this was i said last episode was the best episode this episode was great. Um, I'm not sure like if the chess scene tops the the fuck scene. So I'm still going. I like the chess scene analogy, man. It was great. I think overall last episode was stronger. Um, I just had more fun with it. Um, but this one. I don't know, it was great as well, it was great as well, it just keeps getting better and better. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed my reaction, as always, be the boiling Take care, God bless, peace.